Smash Writing, and today we're going to be talking about Love Lies Bleeding. I really wanted to go see this movie in the theaters, but I could uh, for life of me figure out when the hell this movie was going to theaters, or if it even went to my movie theater, because I kept getting confused. I'd look it up, and I'd find the date it was released was the day that it released at the festival, and I couldn't figure out when the hell it was going to theaters. So I'm like, after a little bit, I'm like, you know what? Put it in June, we'll do it then, and here we are. Let's talk about it, shall we? Uh, we open to uh, Crater's gym. We meet Lou, who's unclogging a toilet. And we meet a woman named Daisy, who's very interested in Lou, and Lou is not interested in them. And we get a, you know, that's proven correct whenever Lou lies about what she's doing after work and goes home alone. From there, we meet uh, Jackie, who's putting out with a guy named JJ, we learn later his name is JJ, for a uh, job because she's new to town and she doesn't even have anywhere to stay. Uh, she's sleeping underneath a bridge. She wakes up the next morning. We see her doing her normal morning workout routine and getting ready to start her day. And I just want to say, as a side note, as a smoker, lose qu quit smoking tapes make me really want to have a cigarette. So thank you for that movie. I can't smoke in the room with him. Lou sings around her sister Beth's house and we meet all of her nieces and nephews and JJ, the guy Jackie had been sleeping with the night before. That's Beth's husband. That's gonna be complicated later on, no is it? But um, we see uh, Jackie, she's arriving at the gun range and meeting JJ and meets uh, Lou Sr. We learn that Jackie really does not care about guns. She believes in her own strength. After that, Lou sees Jackie for the first time at the gym, and there is instant attraction from Lou. But uh, she's kind of taken out of it when the FBI arrives. They want to talk to her about her old man, and they want to talk to her mom specifically. She doesn't know where her mom is. It's been that though, and the FBI leaves her their card just in case she wants to talk. Uh, this rocks her enough to where she closes the gym early, like just wanting to get away from everything. But uh, she runs into Jackie outside. They start talking a little bit. Jackie punches a jock in the face. And Lou takes her inside to calm down a little bit. And that's when Lou introduces her to the wide, wonderful world of steroids. Jackie's a little reluctant at first. She's all natural. But she caves in and does a little bit. And... From there, they end up back at Lou's place, and they have a wonderful night, and Lou makes her breakfast in the morning. And uh, when Jackie asks, Lou offers to let her, or Lou allows her to crash at her house. Uh, this is also where we find out that, um, I'm going to find out, Jackie tells Lou where she's working, and this upsets Lou a little bit. Lou Sr., we'll just call him Sr. from now on. Is her dad, and she does not talk to her dad, does not like him, and even tells her that she really shouldn't be working there. From uh, that point out, it's time for a montage of those two getting closer together, getting to know each other better, uh, her working out, steroids, and one shot of Daisy feeling jealous. We get a little brief shot afterwards. Below. Lou is a uh, senior, is a uh, seems to be a gun smuggler of sorts, and. Lou calls him a psycho and um, confirming once again to Jackie that her mom is gone. Nowhere, not deceased, don't know where she is. Senior actually shoots at Jackie to get her attention to come over and teach her how to shoot a gun. We actually do find out though Jackie, despite the fact she does not like guns, is a pretty good shot. The Jackie invites Lou to Vegas because that's Jackie's big plan. She is just here for a little bit. She's going to Vegas to do bodybuilding competition and now she wants Lou to come with her. And after that's over, they're going to go to California. But Lou, specifically, just like the fact she seems happy about it, doesn't give her a direct answer. And then they go on a double date with JJ and Beth. And it is awkward as you can imagine it. It appears like JJ's been hitting on, uh, not hitting, but hitting Beth. So when he gets up from the table and goes to clean himself off, Lou meets him outside the restrooms and starts telling him off. When JJ drops the bomb that, oh, you know, you should be talking to your girlfriend, mean that she slept with me for a job, and you know, imagine what she's doing for you, 
to get a house and a free gym membership. And it's obviously Rock's Lou. And they argue about it on the way home, but all is forgiven soon after they arrive, and after a little bit they have their first I love you's. So here comes the downfall. <laughs> the next morning they get a call and rush to the hospital. Beth has been put in the hospital. She's badly beaten up. And Lou Sr. says we're gonna we're gonna deal with JJ our own way. And Lou reminds him, you said that the last time. And all the while, uh, Jackie's getting more and more upset and she finally loses it whenever she sees Lou breaking down after the senior leaves. And she steals the keys and takes the truck and pays a little visit to JJ and proceeds to beat him to death. And to the point where she actually snaps his jaw off the bone and off his face and it's just hanging there. And by the time uh, Lou notices her keys are gone, she's taking a cab home and she sees her truck parked a few blocks, a few houses away from JJ's. She runs over, finds the body, and freaks out at that, and finds Jackie in a catatonic state in the bathtub. But Lou goes right into thinking mode, right into cleanup. She gets the body wrapped up, they get the body in JJ's car, and they're traveling out. They're, she knows, just follow me, I know what I'm doing. And it almost goes really well till Daisy stops them at a traffic light. And she has to promise to hang out with her sometime to get her to go away. But she gets a good look at the both of them. So Lou takes them to this cavern kind of deal. They drop the JJ's car and the body into the cavern and they catch it on fire. And they get back to Lou's house and Lou's pretty much like, I'm gonna go clean, you're gonna stay here. Jackie just wants to leave to Vegas. This is leaving day for Vegas, competition. And Lou's like, you can't go, we cannot go anywhere. We have to be as visible as possible right now because a lot of things are going to happen I set into motion and you need to listen to me and stay here and to make sure of that she locks Jackie in the house and she goes to JJ's to clean up any blood they missed she's about done when Jay uh, senior and pals show up so she hides from them in the closet and they leave and she's able to get out of there and she gets back home to find the window has been smashed in Jackie did not take to being locked in she started taking more and more steroids. She busted out and she went to the gym. Meanwhile, while she's waiting for Jackie to come back from wherever, uh, we see Senior getting the news from one of the cops he's on his payroll, telling him the FBI found the cavern. They've noticed the smoke and everything. And you got about 24 hours before they tie it back to you. Because JJ is his brother, his son-in-law and everything. And this has got him really upset. And meanwhile, back with Lou, Jackie's come home, and she is out of it. She's been, she took all the steroids at the house, she's taken more steroids at the gym, and she is out. And it kind of gets in her face over locking her in, and Lou's like, you cannot leave, we have to stay here, I'm working on something, I'm trying to help you here. And Jackie headbutts her in the face, and storms out, and jumps into a space psychedelic van and takes off for Vegas. Uh, she wakes up at the competition. She's made it there. She's still a bit fucked up. Meanwhile, Lou's back at the hospital visiting Beth for a very somber birthday party for one of the uh, nephews. And she's distraught over not have, knowing what happened to JJ. Because neither of them have told her what's going on. And Senior confronts Lou at the uh, vending machines over, you know, I know what you did, why would you do this kind of deal? Because it's all coming back on him now, and he suspects, he, well, he knows it was Lou somehow behind this. And Lou is saying, well, it wasn't me, and before she can argue that anymore, the cops show up with the news of JJ's demise, and Beth loses it. And uh, meanwhile, back at the cliffside, uh, they found even more bodies. It seems Lou Sr. has been depositing all of the bodies of his enemies into that cliff. And now it's all coming to light. Back at the contest, you see uh, Jackie is still reeling 
everyone around her has someone special to them and she is all alone. And she manages to make it through the group routine okay, but she's starting to panic on the other side of the curtain when Lou arrives to give her some words of advice, which I did not bite. This was a hallucination. And while she's doing her routine, she's hallucinating more and more until she throws up with Lou, who tells her, like, I just told asked you one thing. And then she snaps back into reality, and she actually did throw up, and she's leaving the stage, and one of the other bodybuilders laugh at her, and she beats her ass. The real Lou is heading back to the hospital. And, uh, uh, heading back home from the hospital. And Daisy is waiting outside for their planned little hangout. And she is really laying it on thick that she knows that she knows that she saw something weird with the knew there was something weird with her driving JJ's car and the the big beefy girl she called it, Jackie driving Lou's truck. And to get her off of this topic, Lou does what she has to do. Meanwhile, Jackie's being arrested, and she has one phone call, only one person she can call, she calls Lou, and Daisy answers, telling her to stop calling, and she does she wants nothing to do with her, while Lou is distraught in the bathroom. So now, Jackie really has nothing, Jackie has no one left, except one more person. That'd be Senior, who comes and picks her up. And he's taking her back home. And she, he's going on about, you know, Jackie may have said all these horrible things about me, but I run that gym and she needs a me more than ever and you both need me more than ever. And she wants to get out of the car, but he's like, you get out, you're on your own. The only way you're going to fix this is with my help and you staying here. So, backed into a corner, she has no other choice but to stay in the car and go along with whatever he wants and go back to his house. The next morning... Jackie and, not Jackie, Lou and Daisy are having breakfast at this diner, and Daisy is hinting that she'll just tell the cops that she saw Jackie driving JJ's car. So, once again, Lou's like, oh, don't do that, don't bring it up at all, because it'll just get me in trouble. Trying to manipulate the manipulator here. And they head off to go back to Lou's, so Daisy can get some of her things, and Lou can go pick up her sister. And as she opens the door to go inside, boom! Blood splatters the side of Lou's face. She turns around, Lou's dropped, and Jackie's there with a gun. Lou desperately tries to s explain what's going on, but Jackie wants none of it and runs off. She gets to a payphone and calls her own home and tells her young sibling, never fall in love, it is painful. And then her mom gets on the phone and calls her a monster, which breaks her even more. Lou, meanwhile, is panicking. She is wrapping up the body, she is scrubbing up the blood, and the FBI show. She just manages to hide the body, but they're really laying on to her now. They really want to talk to her mom, or her to talk about her dad. Because at this point, the ball's rolling, they found the bodies, and it's only a matter of time now. And they depart. And meanwhile, Jackie's arrived back at Senior's house, and she is knocked out cold. And Senior calls Lou to tell her, All you have to do is stay tight. We're going to throw all of this on Jackie. I have her here. And Lou freaks out and tells him to either let her go, or she's turning state's evidence on the FBI. And he's having none of that. And he sends his cop and buddy after her, but she gets the first. She gets the drop on him before he can shoot her. So now she's tail spinning. She's drags Daisy's body down the stairs and into the truck. And I'm thinking all the time, like, you don't have time for that. Why are you dragging this body down the stairs? But she rushes to um, Senior's house. And she runs into Beth first. And Beth is yelling and screaming at her like, He was my husband, how dare you? And she's like, you're an absolute moron. 
where's Lou? And she doesn't want to tell her at first, and she, Lou has to rough her up a little bit. And finally finds Jackie tied up outside the uh, tennis house thing, right near the tennis court. But Jackie freaks out the moment her restraints are cut off and tries to run away and knows to struggle a bit before Jackie gets the gun and starts firing it at Lou because she thinks that Lou is going to have her framed and Lou is like, oh, are you kidding? I am doing everything in my possible to save your ass. And they make up there on the tennis court. But Lou has her go out the back. She's going to go up the front and cut off Senior. The cops are coming. And she wasn't exactly wrong. The cops are coming. But when she gets up front, Lou Senior shoots her in the leg. And he's taunting her a bit. She's trying to get out whether or not he killed her mom. And he is not giving that answer to her. And he's not, she's never going to know. But before she can finish him off, Jackie came back. And Jackie is a giant now. And she holds him down. <clears throat> and uh, Lou has a chance to shoot him. But she likes to let the police have him. And the two run off. And we see the two driving down the road. Everything looks like it's going to be peace and peaches and cream. While Jackie's sleeping though, you see Daisy's body moving in the bed of the truck. And she pulls off to the side of the road. Daisy is still alive for now. Lou strangles her to death and finishes her off. And the credits roll as she's dragging the body off into the desert, stopping to light up a cigarette. And that is Love Lies Bleeding. Kristen Stewart continues to be just amazing at everything. Uh, I've never thought I would enjoy Kristen Stewart's movies as much as I do. But each time I watch one of her movies, the more of a fan I become of her. And this movie is no different. You really, she pulls you into her world and get, it's so easy for you to get behind Lou. Because she, you see all the struggles and pain and how more outward of a person she becomes throughout this movie. And despite, you know, the terrible things that are happening in this movie, you really get behind her in a way where you want to see her succeed here. And of course she wasn't alone in this. Caddy O'Brien, the chemistry she has with Caddy O'Brien is incredible throughout this movie. They felt like a true couple in this gritty, dark world. And you feel for her pain whenever everything starts spiraling out of control for her. And you want to see her rebound and get that good happy ending too. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing her in Twisters now. Good lord. I hope she has a big role in Twisters. Uh, then you have the rest of the cast as just icing on this cake, right? From um, the terrible, horrible character performances from Ed Harris and Dave Franca. Uh, the battered woman syndrome going on with Jenna Malone. And the annoying terror that is Anna Bereshnikov. 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 Anna. Uh, the woman who played Daisy. And I can see why a lot of people would feel bad for Daisy at the end. Because, like, you, you, she could have been saved, but Lou killed her instead. But I think, I think Daisy's one of the worst characters. She was manipulating Lou throughout this movie. She was manipulating her to spend time with her. Then she was manipulating her into the bedroom, despite the fact she kn you can clearly see that Lou is not happy with you and does not want to be with you. And you're manipulating her into all of this. And she manipulates her at the diner again when Lou is clearly not interested. And whenever um, Jackie calls her, she won't let Lou talk to her. She tells off Jackie and hangs up, but it's not like she's going to tell Lou that Jackie called. And then knowing that she has to go pick up her sister, she's trying to get her drunk at lunch to keep her at the house. Uh, these are early warning signs of an abusive spouse here. Or an abusive significant other. Oh, she's a monster. I, I, I laughed my ass off when they killed her at the end. Like, good! You deserve it too! The story was well written. It was well told, I, um, as crazy as it is, as dirty and gritty, everyone felt grounded within this world. Nothing felt too outlandish or too crazy, except for one part, and we'll, we'll get to that part. 
I love the opposing views of love we get here with the uh, you know the toxic relationship between Beth and um, JJ to the love between uh, Jackie and um, Lou and it does have its toxic moments and down moments but like if they going from here well, now that they're out of this town and out of this family and everything Lou, uh, Jackie can get clean of the steroids like they're gonna be fucking golden they leave all of this shit behind and just focus on one another the, the gore in this was delicious wonderful gore the jaw especially that jaw ooh, well done it is an art house film so your views on some of these shots are going to be depending on you there are some shots in here that look great and incredible there are some shots in here that look weird and why are you doing this uh, for the most part I enjoyed them the part that I was not into was the giant I had to look it up like what well, I had a vague idea but I didn't want to go off of a vague idea so off to Amanda the Jedi I went for the ten of you who will watch this go watch her channel she's just incredible work but from what I well, we could tell and what I've seen it was a boost of her confidence because she's been down trotted and beaten down over the course of the last 24 hours mixed in with a little bit of um, her own strength versus the gun and her own strength being much powerful than much more powerful than the gun so I still would have just kept her regular sized you still would have had the same effect and you still would have got the same shot of um, Lou looking up at her and then worked off with the colors from there I just I had the, the giant thing didn't do it for me but I did really like that ending though of them killing Daisy I laughed I shouldn't have laughed but I, I did chuckle at that with all that said what will I grade this movie I really enjoyed it I had a hell of a time I'd like to rewatch it again and if I saw it on DVD, because at this point, it's just happy accident I find DVDs anymore. I'd buy it. It'd be in my library. Fuck it. Let's do it. S tier movie. All the way. Got a wonderful time. Do suggest you go check this movie out. As always, have a good day, night, evening, afternoon, wherever you are. Have a good one. Bye bye. <laughs>